All right, so in this chapter, we will be looking at few more reactions. Uh, <clears throat> now, these reactions are not for, for mechanism. These are only for memorization purposes. So, if you just encounter it somewhere, then you, sh you should know how to handle them. All right. So, the first reaction is, <clears throat> all right. so we call it as hydrogenation. And it's also called as reduction. All right. <clears throat> so, if you look at this reaction here, all right. So, let us compare the two structures, right. So, we have an alkene, okay, and we want to convert that into a single bond, right. So, converting your alkene into a single bond, right. So, first of all, what is the difference between the two structures, right. So, if you compare right so if you have number of carbons are the same right so you have six carbons you have six carbons right and if you count the hydrogens right this has two less hydrogens and this has two extra hydrogens all right so if you look at the number of hydrogens total this has plus two hydrogens okay two extra hydrogens so the question is how do i go from here to here then all right so what i need to go from here to here is two hydrogens that means is H2 okay hydrogen gas so you need hydrogen gas the problem is hydrogen gas cannot react by itself okay so you need to throw some catalyst in here so sometimes you see H2 with platinum or H2 with palladium okay so platinum is a metal right that's your platinum metal and PD is palladium. All right, so, these two are the metals. So, if you throw hydrogen with platinum or hydrogen with palladium metal, anyone is fine, that will convert your double bond into a single bond. That means it will convert your alkene okay, to an alkane. Now, again, how do I figure it out? Because I am converting a double into a single and what is the difference here going from here to here is the two hydrogens. So, if I add two hydrogens across double bond, then I will get the single bond. Okay, So, that is your first reaction that is hydrogenation. All right. Second reaction is <clears throat> something similar to what we looked before. All right. So, <clears throat> let us say if you have a double bond here. Right, so, that is your double bond right? and if I throw HCl, right? so we all know now that H will go on this carbon, right? so that is your carbon 1 and carbon 2. So, H has to go to carbon 2 and chlorine has to go on carbon 1. So, we have looked at the mechanism, we did this reaction in detail. right? So, carbon 1 will get the chlorine and carbon 2 will get the hydrogen right? so that is your carbon 1 and 2 right and this reaction has to follow Markovnikov's rule because carbon 1 and 2 are two different carbons right so this goes with Markovnikov's all right so it follows the rule what if I want to go right but if I do not want this I want to switch the position of hydrogen and chlorine. Okay. I want chlorine to go on carbon 2 now and hydrogen on carbon 1. So, in this case, I am going anti Markovnikov. Okay. So, if I had to go anti Markovnikov, then you still need to throw HCl because you are adding H and Cl. Right. But anytime you want to go anti Markovnikov's, what you ha also have to place or you also have to add is called peroxide. So, that is your peroxide. So, anytime you see a peroxide, okay, that means you are going anti Markovnikov's, right. So, peroxide is 
you can in, it can be in the form of H2O2 that's your hydrogen peroxide or it can be also written as HOOH. Okay. So, peroxide actually has two hydrogens, so sorry, two oxygens that's your peroxide right. or you could replace the hydrogen with a carbon. You can also have peroxide like this right. or you can have anything as R group. Okay. R group stands for carbon or you could have anything, any R group as a carbon. So, that is why in general we write peroxide as ROOR. Okay. So, peroxide anytime you see a peroxide in your reaction or ROR that means you are going anti-Markovnikov. Okay. And the third reaction here is it is called dihydroxylation. So, for dihydroxylation what we have let us say we start with an alkene okay, and we convert an alkene into two alcohols. So, dihydroxylation means you are putting the two alcohols on those two carbons. Again we are doing the reaction across the double bond. right? So, we are adding OH on this carbon and OH on this carbon and how can we do that? You need OSO4 or you need KMNO4. So, OSO4 stands for osmium tetroxide and potassium permanganate. Okay. So, you can use any of these and you have not seen these reagents before. So, if you see OSO4 anywhere okay, starting with a double one think about putting the two alcohols on those two carbons. Right. Now, here you have to pay also pay attention to something about the stereochemistry. Right. So, the two OH groups are above the plane okay. and when you have a situation like this we call them as syn or syn dihydroxylation. So, this reaction is also called as syn dihydroxylation. Syn means on the same side, anti means one up one down. Okay. So, this is other way to tell cis and trans. Right. So, syn means on the same side. Again these reactions are not that common, but just in case if you see them uh, somewhere in YD plus or somewhere in the book, just make sure you know how to handle it. Okay. Uh, for this reaction, the one reaction we learned before addition of H and Cl right? and this is your anti Markovnikov addition of HCl. Okay. This is a very important reaction, we might use this in synthesis all right? <clears throat> and including the reduction reaction. All right? So, these reactions do not have any mechanisms or we do not really have to learn the mechanisms for these reactions, but just in case if you see them, if you encounter somewhere then you should know how to handle. All right? <clears throat>